Hello, Squirrel Tribe 2.0. Happy Thursday, my dudes. It is Thursday. I missed hump day. That's my fault, not your fault. Blame it on me. I take full responsibility. I didn't mean to, but things happened. And so here we are on a Thursday instead of a hump day. It is what it is. Every once in a while, it happens. So I hope you guys are having a good day so far. Um, I would like to point out this uh, smorgasbord of stuff behind me and then explain to you why there is a smorgasbord of stuff behind me. But first, I'm going to take a lovely sip of this really weird colored drink. I've been trying not to drink too much coffee, which I don't know if this is actually helpful or not, but I don't know if you can see it. There's a thing of Lotus right up there. So I've been doing the Blue Lotus Energy, two pumps. Then I also mix it with a little bit of orange juice, obviously organic orange juice, and this one's from Whole Foods. And then I mix it with the club soda that I can get at Target for 99 cents, right? And because my kid used all the ice, it's kind of sort of cool, but more like room temperature or whatever. And that's why it also looks like baby diarrhea green color because blue and orange make this kind of fun neon green. But I have found that I can drink this after two o'clock and still be fully sleepy and in bed by 10 p.m., which makes me sound some type of way. But 10 o'clock is my bedtime. I'm, you know, no more partying until 2 a.m. for me on a school night. But this helps me stay awake but not like so awake that I can't like go to sleep later. So that's what we're doing over here. Um, if you hear loud, loud noises, the person above me in my apartments is either packing things to move or doing weighted jumping jacks while wearing high heels, but it's a man. So probably not the high heels part. I've seen him. He's very like, I don't think he'd put on high heels, but uh, anything's possible. You just never know. If you've seen the movie, I think it was called Split. Is that the one where, where Broski in the movie had like 17 different personalities or however many and one of them was to dress up as a woman with heels? Maybe that's what guy, the guy upstairs is doing, but I don't think so. So I went to Sam's Club unsupervised um, on Tuesday. Was it yesterday? Was it hump day? Y'all, it was yesterday, which is why I didn't do a video here because yesterday was very, very busy. So I went to Sam's Club and I got a lot of stuff. And I got a lot of stuff that I needed and then I got a lot of stuff that was a good deal because that's the thing. I look for good deals when I go places. I've talked to you guys numerous times about how when I go to Target, I look for the buy three, get like a fourth one free. Or if you spend $20, you get like a $10 gift card or something like that. Now, of course, I'm not going to get bamboozled into buying the things I don't actually need just to be like, oh, I got $5 off and oh, I got a free one. If I don't need the things, I'm not going to buy three to get a fourth one free. And if I don't need to spend $50 to get a $10 gift card, I'm not going to spend $50, right? So what I like to do is when I go to Sam's Club, I try to get the things that I normally would buy at like Target, Walmart, wherever I need to go get them, like the man's deodorant or Q-tips or <laughs> pads because, um, and this may be TMI for some of you, but uh, welcome to Squirrel Tribe 2.0 where TMI is kind of the, the whole shebang over here. Um, I don't like tampons at night, especially. I don't think it's a good idea personally. And the older I get, the more I uh, believe in that. So I use pads and uh, my child, I don't want her using tampons before a certain age. And so she uses them too. I think it's better for our bodies, even though those still technically have chemicals in them. They're not as good as there. There are some all cotton always ones, but they did not have them in the overnight kind. Ladies, you know what I'm saying? So you get more frontal coverage, more back coverage, all up in that scoopy middle, which is gross when you say it in this context. Huh. Pretend you didn't hear it. I'll pretend I didn't say it. We will keep on like this never happened. Whew, okay. Whew. So um, I go there and I get these things, right? So I get the, um, the Q-tips because the kid needs Q-tips. So I get these and I get home and I'm looking and I'm like, why is this one littler than these two? Like, why is that a thing? And for some reason, there's two boxes that have 625 count and one of them that has 500. Why? Why didn't you just make them all the same? I don't understand that part, but I'm okay with it. I, I still bought them. And here's the problem. And here's the problem. I can guarantee you, I will guarantee you, I would put money on this one that the majority of us use these for the one thing you're never supposed to use them for. And that's to jam the earwax farther into your ear canal. Because technically we're thinking to ourselves, put a Q-tip in there, stir it around like you're trying to mix up some, you know, egg yolks with a whisker and it's going to pull everything out. 
No, all it does is jam all the stuff down in there and then like get weird colored on the outside and then you pull it out and you're like, oh no, I've done a good job. Your ear still itches, you still can't hear anything. You have this like weird whatever. It's because we have slowly just shoved stuff farther down into our ears by using these for the one purpose it literally says, do not use in your ears. It literally tells you, warning, do not insert swab into ear canal. I'm not making it up. It says it right there. There's your warning, my dudes. And yet, 99.99% .99 of us are like, jam, right in there. Tell me I'm wrong, dare you. I dare you to get in the comment section and go, oh, I have never, with a Q-tip in my ear, I read directions and I follow directions. Y'all lying, if you say so, you are lying. But the whole reason I want to tell you about these things is because I've come up with a genius idea and I want to share it with you because I feel like it could be a genius idea for all of us and here's why. Let me give you a little backstory on me and why I am frugal, but like not really frugal, but I do pay attention to pricing, but then sometimes I overbuy and then whatever else. And sometimes I like stockpile the wrong things and what, anyway. So when I was younger, it was just my mom and I growing up. And when you're, you know, eight years old and 12 years old, generally you can't get a job, but you want money because you want to buy things. And I would say, mom, can I have money for this? And she'd be like, get a job. And I'd be like, but I'm six and I can't, it's illegal. And she'd be like, well, wait till you're old enough and then you can, you know, get a job and earn money. And I'm like, but I want a Cabbage Patch doll now, or I want these shoes now, right? So I figured I would make my own money without needing a job. No, I didn't steal it because, I mean, that would be the easiest way to do it, but that's frowned upon by all of society. I stole one pack of gum my entire life, never doing that again. Um, but here's what I decided to do. Dollar store is the best thing in the world, especially if you are in school. Elementary school, never too early to start your hustle. Okay, I'm just saying, you do you, boo. And if you want to start hustling in kindergarten, I will back you up. I will help you. I will make buttons. I will do whatever you need to get your hustle started early. It's never too early to be an entrepreneur. Most kids in kindergarten can't say the word, but it doesn't mean you can't be one, okay? Try to spell it. I can't even spell it. I'm mentally trying to spell it. I know what letters are in there, just not quite sure which format they go in. So we're not even gonna attempt it and look extra, extra special today. So when I was younger, I would go to whatever the dollar store was. It was a 99 cent store at that time, actually. And I would buy pixie sticks, okay? a dollar for a bag of pixie sticks that had like a hundred of them in there. Today, you're probably getting 20 of them for a dollar 25 because shrinkflation. Um, but I would take these pixie sticks. This is in middle school and in high school. I would take them to school and I would sell them for 10 cents each. I spent a dollar and I got a hundred and I would take them to school and sell them for 10 cents each. And then sometimes depending on the person, I'd sell it for a quarter. Once in a while, I'd sell it for a a dollar, just depending on the person. Same thing with blow pops. You go buy a bag of blow pops for a dollar and they've got like five in there, right? And you sell them for 50 cents each, you're making a small profit. I didn't say I was out there, you know, changing the world and making enough to buy a yacht or anything like that, but I was making enough that I could then turn around and go to the school cafeteria and go buy an ice cream. Cause that was really all I really wanted in middle school was to be able to go get ice cream on ice cream days. And the easiest way to do it without asking my mom for ice cream money every single day was to sell things to other kids who had minimal money, but enough that they were willing to part with it. Most people will part with a dime. Most people will part with a quarter. A dollar is a little harder, but if you knew which kids had the rich parents, those are the ones you hit up for a dollar. Like, listen, this is how this works. I believe in um, hustle, you know, the hustle of whatever you need to do as a kid or as an adult to make sure that you get by and, and whatever else. But I also believe in, and this is where I'm gonna sound awful. If you have two kids, and I know this sounds awful, but this is middle school, high school me, okay? This is whatever. If you have two kids and one kid has a dollar to his name and that's all he has in life, and one kid has $20 to his name and he's gonna get way more later on because whatever else. The kid who has a dollar to his name and no more in life, 10 cents for a pixie stick. The kid who has $20 and can just ask mom and dad for more, he's a dollar for a pixie stick because to both of them, they're getting the same value for the same how they see money, in my opinion, right? At least in middle school and in high school. Well then, I get to high school and my mom used to work for Coca-Cola long, long time ago. And I would take my backpack to her work after school and I would dump everything out in the car and Coca-Cola on every single floor in the building, they had Coca-Cola, like the vending machines with the cans in it. They also had like the fountain things. So I would go make the suicide sodas where you put a little bit of everything. You know, you've got mellow yellow, Sprite, Fanta, Coke, cherry Coke, um, 
um, Minute Maid, orange, all these things, and you're just mixing it together. Did it taste good? No. Did we drink it anyway? Yes. Ask me why? I have peer pressure. I don't know. But I would go through and I would try to get as many cans as I could out of the machines because they were free. They were free. And I'm like, you know what? If they're going to give it away for free, I'm smart enough to take it for free and then turn around and make a smidgen of a profit off of it. So I would take it to school the next day. And the best days to do this were nacho days and pizza days. You take your cans of soda to school where you could not get a soda or a pop, however you want to call it. Of course, in Atlanta, everything's called Coke because hello, Coca-Cola. Um, take them to school and you sell them, right? You're, they're 50 cents or a dollar, they're a dollar 50. Now, of course, when you get to the last two, you can, people would like try to barter more and more. Of, I've only got a dollar, but I'll do your homework or I've got $2 and I'll carry your books for you or blah, 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 blah. I made enough money selling cans of Coke at school that I could get, you know, McDonald's after school. If my friends and I wanted to go to McDonald's, I could go get a cheeseburger, actually a quarter pounder with cheese and some fries and a Dr. Pepper. And that was great. Right. But now I'm having an idea and this is my idea. And I want to share it with you guys because I love you all immensely. So here's what I was thinking. And I don't even know if this will work, but mentally my brain is like, no, totally. It'll totally work. Here's, here's my idea. Okay, so let me show you. Like, um, where did they go? Oh, here. So these, number one, I was really excited that they've added a scratch and sniff to the degree. Cause I did this while I was in Sam's Club and it was like I was sitting next to the man on the couch just, you know, smelling his armpit. It actually smells better when you have a little body odor that, or like sweat that hits it. <sighs> I don't know if you guys have ever smelled this. It smells so good. Anyway, so five of these was like, eight and change or nine and change at Sam's Club. These things are like $4 each at Target or Walmart. It doesn't really matter. So to get five of these in a box for like eight or nine dollars, I could not pass that up. It's genius, right? Here's my thought. For those of you who have a gym membership and go to the gym and you know good and damn well, there are some really smelly people there in the gym. You could sell them deodorant. Thought about this. Just carry extra ones in your bag and be like, bro, I, I don't know if you understand this, but you're smelling a little stanky and there's some, there's some chicks in this gym checking you out, but they're not going to want to get close to you if that's how you smell. I'd like to help you out, but un unfortunately I can't do everything for free because stuff costs money, but I can hook you up with a thing of deodorant for, I don't know, I'm feeling generous today, $5 um, because you clearly need it right this second. So, and then you sell them a deodorant for $5. Did you make money? Yes you made money because if you're buying them at Sam's club, especially you've made like $3 on one little thing of deodorant and broski over there doesn't have to walk around smelling like sweaty ball and might have a girl talk to him. It's not like he's going to leave the gym, go to the store, buy the deodorant, come back, put it on, then try to talk to the girl. That's too much work. But if you happen to already have your little hustle on and your little gym bag with the deodorant, I'm just saying. So the kid, I did the same thing for the kid because uh -huh. So I did the same thing for the kid. Let me show you. Please hold. I just got to, you know, go through everything over here. Uh, okay. So the kid always wants to take snacks to school. She's always like, can I get a bag of tackies and can I get some whatevers? And I'm like, quit taking a whole bag to school and giving it away to your friends. Where we live, your friends have money, little girl. So please understand that. If you want to give something to your friends, if they're willing to go to the school little um, store right there and buy a Izzy or a Gatorade or whatever else, Start your hustle, little girl. Sell them a chewy fruit and nut nature valley bar. $2. They don't want that? Sell them a little cup of fruit. Sell them a cup of fruit because kids need fruit. And sell them one of these. $2. Get your hustle on, little girl. These things were, this was $10 at Sam's Club and there are 16 of them in here. $2 each, that's $32. That's a $22 profit. Okay, I think I did the math right. Yeah, that sounds right. These were $15 and there are 48 in here, $2 each. You have just made $96 minus 15. So hold on. 96 minus 10 is 86 minus five is 81, $81 profit. Come on now. I'm just saying anybody can do this. If you have kids, it kind of helps do it, make, make them take it to school and do it or sporting events, your kids in sports, be that parent. There is nothing 
bad about trying to not be broke or trying to make a little money, a little, little side hustle. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying it seemed real smart to me because I hated being broke when I was little. I'm not saying my mom and I are broke. I personally hated being broke when I was little because if you don't have allowance or if you do have allowance, but it's not enough because you want to do more, the only way to not be broke is to find ways to not be broke. And so if that means starting a little hustle, for some, you know, especially like the boys, it was cutting grass or taking out somebody's garbage or walking somebody's dog or whatever else. For me, it was, you know, I'll babysit and can I clean something or whatever else when I got a little bit older. And then once I could get a job job, uh, I worked jobs all the time. Like I constantly had a job so that I could make money because I didn't want to be broke. In my 20s, I was really stupid. Uh, early 20s, late teens, early 20s, I was really stupid. And being broke didn't really register in my head because I would spend my money the second it came in, like it burned a hole in my pocket. I would just go spend it. And I blame it on, like we talked about in the last video, um, school not teaching me shit when it came to money management and uh, anything like that, which is why the kid and I and the man, we talk about money management all the time with our daughter because I need her to not make the same dumb mistakes I did when I was younger. I almost had a car repossessed because I could not figure out how to manage my money. And I could have figured it out, but my brain was like, no, you should totally go out to eat. You should totally buy those new clothes. Oh my God, how could you pass up those shoes? They're on sale, you know? And instead of my brain going, ma'am, in order to get to that food that you want in order to get to that place that has the clothes in order to go to the place with the shoes you're gonna need your car in order to have your car you're gonna have to make the car payment okay and i didn't think about those things and so then you know you're broke your car's almost repossessed but hey you have food and cute clothes eh, not even good food like tgi fridays back in the day when everybody wanted to go there for jack daniels ribs or or whatnot so anyway I made really dumb decisions when I was in my teens and early twenties with my lack of, you know, saving money, my lack of paying my bills. I thought credit cards were just, Hey, swipe it and deal with it later. And I racked up serious credit card debt. I destroyed my credit score like real, real early, real, real early. And so for the past decade and a half, I've been working to fix every single little thing. You know why? Because I married a man who's not a dumbass and he told me, hey, you're being a dumbass. You got to do better with your money. We can't join together and have this life and half of us be broke as shit because they don't know how to manage their money and because they think with their wants before thinking about their needs. And I was like, oh, I guess this makes sense. Fine, I'll grow up. And so we had those conversations and then started chipping away at credit card debt and trying to lift up the credit score, trying not to be broke, trying to make sure that I had a certain amount in savings and a certain amount in checking and whatever else. And so now I'm at a place where mentally I tell myself I'm broke on a daily basis because it helps me spend less and look at less things that I don't actually need. And now I told you guys before, I'm trying to go through a minimalist, the crap out of this place. It doesn't really look like it. If you look back there, but I'm trying to minimalist the crap out of this place. Okay. So how about this? Look, chicken breast. Okay. <laughs> chicken titties, if you will. So I got the, the Brussels of the chicken in the can and these, the reason I got these, if you look at the back ingredients, chicken, water, salt, nothing else. Do I know what the chicken ate? Do I know the chicken's living conditions? I do not. I'm going to hope it was lovely that there was a lot of sun. They got to frolic in a pasture and whatever else. They were friends with the little chickens that were next to them. Do I believe that? <laughs> but it makes me feel better to try to believe that. So I think these are happy frolicking chickens that died of natural death and wanted to be shredded <laughs> for my canned chicken. That's what I've decided. That way when I eat this, I can eat it without guilt. Okay. So I got these because this was $10 at Sam's club, right? There are six cans, 12.5 ounces each. And when I go to Publix, which is where I get chicken, it is normally anywhere from 26 to $32 for me to buy a big thing of chicken, which I bring home, I put half in the crock pot, which is somewhere else, and then I make shredded chicken, right? Well, that in the long run feels way more expensive and I have to make sure I eat it all then because I don't really have freezer space and I don't think frozen um, um, chicken salad really tastes that good after a defrost. Mm -hmm. So these, I pop one can open, I make chicken salad and I've got like five meals out of this because I'm also trying not to eat nearly as much so I don't have to spend nearly as much food and then my waist goes down just a little bit and then, you know what I'm saying? So 
look, every time I do this, I think of Mila Kunis in the movie, um, just friends i think that's the one with justin timberlake where she's trying to get information on where he is and she's talking to this lady she's like no i'm totally the model she goes she said something like um no um when i in pictures i get more how did she say it religious looking so less like i guess not religious looking i don't really know the word she used and she goes and this gets longer to make it look like her face was skinnier and she was more whatever and i find myself doing that all the time and i have no idea why but anyway y'all didn't care i told you anyway I just want to show you this because it's funny and it amused me and I had to buy them just because of what it said. I'm making tacos tonight. Look, I'm making tacos tonight. The kid, of course, picks these things out, which I'm like, these are not healthy for you. These are not good. And she's like, mom, let me have nacho cheese tacos. And I'm like, one time, but you're drinking water for the rest of the week. You're not touching anything else. There's no Starbucks. There's no iced coffee. There's nothing. Only water. One taco shell. And then you can make like a little baby taco salad with rice and lettuce. And, and it's brown rice, organic, organic lettuce. And the beef I got is um, pasture-raised, grass-fed, grass-finished, organic. Like there's a whole lot to it. So not the cheapest, I understand. But anyway, so she wants those, <laughs> y'all. I got these. And I'm going to show you the box. I'm gonna show you the box. You see the box? Can you see the box? And then I'm gonna just really carefully just show you that part and ask you if you understand exactly where my mind went when I saw, and I'm not even gonna tell you because if you know me, you've already figured it out. So I was like, oh, I have to. And then when it's time to fix the meal for the man and the kid and myself, I'm gonna be like, sir, <laughs> after dinner, would you like to? <laughs> and then I'm just, and then he's gonna lose his ever loving mind and it's gonna be absolutely hilarious. So that's, that's the plan for that. Oh, also, this is empty. I've already taken all these out and put them in my drawer. But Target, for those of you who wanna know right now, they have a bunch of their coffees buy two and they're $12.99 each instead of like $17.99 because Keurig things are getting stupid expensive. And when I was at Sam's Clubs, I looked at, all the big coffee things they had, but I didn't want 76 of anything, right? So then when I went to Target and, and they were like $40, $46 for, how many comes in the McDonald's thing? McDonald's whatever ones at Sam's Club. It was $46, <laughs> I like McDonald's, but y'all getting real pricey over there. $46 for 96 pods, which is probably a really, really good deal. But at the same time, I didn't want 96 of the same thing, back to back to back. So when I went to Target and they had, they had this, they had the donut shop ones, and then they had McDonald's ones, and there's other brands, Folgers, New, Newman, Newman? I don't know, somebody else's, not Starbucks, obviously, that were two, uh, if you buy two, they're $12.99 each, I got that. So I spent $26 for 48 which is almost along the same lines. Yeah, I, I spent a couple extra dollars that I didn't need to, but I got a variety. So I don't know. Over time, that made me go broke if I keep doing it that way. But it was what I wanted, and so that's what we went with. So there's that. Pew! Y'all, I hope you're having a good day. I really do. I know this is probably the most you're like, what the hell is this video? I just want to talk to you about random stuff, and I was thinking about it earlier because the kid, she spent the last of her birthday money what is my hair doing? She spent the last of her birthday money yesterday on a Stanley. Hold on. She left it here. I'm going to show it to you. Oh, because what am I? She spent the last of her. Ow, what is going on every single day? I need new mascara if it's going to keep trying to kill me. I can't. Please hold. Please hold. I think I made it. Okay. She wanted, she spent the last of her birthday money on this Stanley, whatever, right? 40 ounce, because that's what all the kids are doing these days. Um, Oh, what the hell was I going to say about that? I was going to tell you something about that. Oh, the whole reason I was doing this, because she spent the last of her birthday money on that. And then today, oh, my eye, what is going on? Today, when I picked her up at school, she says, hey, can we go to um, Party City? Party City? No, Spirit Halloween, because that's what just opened up. Can we go to Spirit Halloween? I need to get face makeup for Halloween for, for my friends and I and whatever else. And I was like, cool, how much money do you have left from your birthday? And she's like, what? And I'm like, what? Because she wants plain white sneakers so she can do something to them. Then she needs a pair of shorts and she needs a shirt and she needs face makeup. And I'm like, well, here's the thing. At this day and age, yes, as your parent, I should provide you with everything that you need, which I do, but I don't have to provide you with everything that you want. That there, my child, guarantees a spoiled kid who does not know how to work for things on their own. So I was like, 
Unfortunately, if you don't have any birthday money left, looking like you're gonna have a plain face for Halloween. So what do you wanna do here? And then she says, well, I need money. Here you go, kid, go make some money. You got two weeks to make uh, uh, some money on selling some stuff to your little friends who also have money and wanna spend it all the time. They always wanna go shopping and do all these things. Sell them a chewy fruit and nut bar or a thing of diced peaches or mixed fruit or mandarin oranges. If you want, I will even go to uh, maybe Walmart because I don't want to go all back to Sam's Club. It's it's not close and get those little bitty bottle waters and you can go sell those things for 50 cents to, to your friends because the same ones at school are like a dollar twenty five. We can out under undercut the school, which is not very nice. I hear myself um, and you can make a little money off that way. Your friends stay hydrated. You make a little bit of money. You can go buy your face, whatever. And you're learning. You're learning how to do your own little hustle. OK, she builds things on Roblox all day long. And then she shows them to me and I'm like, ma'am, I need you to understand that you are an architect. You are a genius. The things you build in this thing, I can't even comprehend how you're doing it. Number one, it is beautiful. If this was like real life build, like that was a real house and that yard you built and everything else and the way you designed the inside and put everything in there, like, um, um, staged it. I couldn't think of the word. I mean, you would be on the front of like home and garden or something living. What's the living one? What's the living one? Down home living. That feels accurate. Sure, we'll go with that. You'll be on all these magazines. I'm like, you, ma'am, should be recording everything you're doing on Roblox and shoving that shit up on YouTube because you can get paid from other people watching your videos. YouTube, you can get monetized easily doing that because I could sit there for hours and just be like, and watch how it's done because I can't do it and it's fascinating and it's beautiful. And you throw music in the background, pfft, done. People will watch that thing for hours, especially other kids. Man, we got to work on this whole extra hustles because I'm not raising a broke child, just so we know. I'm not raising a broke child and I'm not raising a child who feels like she has to nine to five for somebody else for her entire life. There's nothing wrong with it, but I want her to understand that there are options and she can do other things in life or in conjunction with, you know what I'm saying? You can in conjunction with anything you want. You can have a nine to five job and a little baby side hustle. There's plenty of people out there, a lot of them being teachers who work you know, all school year. And then over the summer, instead of, you know, since they're out of school, instead of actually having a summer vacation, like the kids, they go get another job somewhere, whether it's waiting tables, work in retail, whatever. And even during the school year, a lot of them will also take on extra stuff, tutoring or restaurants after work or something else to make that extra money. That's still a hustle. You know what I'm saying? You're still trying to make more money to live your life, uh, especially if you're tutoring and stuff like that. But I want her to know that there are options. Of course, there will be people who will look down and you'll be like, I can't believe you're gonna give her those to go sell to kids at school. Okay, why? Like, what's the problem? What the problem is, you, you go to places and you buy stuff, how is that any different? If you go to a baseball game and you go to the concession stand and you buy a hot dog, I don't see how that's any different than my kid taking these to school and selling it to a kid. Now, the only difference is, and I just realized this, I'm not letting her take the chewy fruit and nut bars because they have peanuts in it and there could be a child with a peanut allergy who doesn't realize it and no. So those are out. We're taking the fruit cups only. Whew, I'm glad we had this discussion, y'all. See, that's, that's what we do. Squirrel Trap family, y'all rock. Thanks for helping me see the light on that one because can't do that. Can't do that. Cannot be the accidental cause of some kid getting anaphylactic shock or something. Nope, nope, okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. Please hold. So. Now I'm going to clean all this up and then I'm going to make tacos for dinner. And then, um, I think we're supposed to watch a movie. The kid and I have been listening to soundtracks, movie soundtracks. Yesterday was Rio. Today was Barbie. And then a couple days ago, it was the greatest showman. And then also this morning was Hamilton. And I'm like, we could watch Hamilton again, but we could also watch Rio again. And I would be very happy. So we're going to watch a movie later. I just don't know which one. Mm -hmm. That's all I got for you guys. I'm sure well, actually we could do this for hours, but I won't make you because I love you and I don't want to do that to you. Um, but yeah. So the, anyway, the whole thing is I would like people to understand that if you are having broke moments or money issues or whatever else you don't have to 
there's always a way to make some little baby side hustle, whatever it is. There's always a way to have some sort of little side hustle, whether it's online, whether it's selling little rinky dink things like this, or, you know, whatever else. I feel like there's something for everybody that they can do. I've said it before, Printify, y'all. I did not realize how easy it is to make things on Printify. You can make things on Printify that have, you don't have to have a logo. You don't have to have any of that kind of stuff. You can just go make anything you want as long as you know how to upload pictures and smack them on something like a notebook or a, a candle or a cup or something. You can start making money. Getting into Printify is free. Free, free, free. Free, 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 free. That's all I'm saying and you guys can go do it. I have faith in every single one of you that you can find ways to make more money so that you don't feel broke or to make it so that you don't have to worry about ever being broke because broke sucks. Being broke sucks. Not knowing if you can go eat or if you need to pay your electric, electric bill or if you need to pay car payment or gas and having to choose between one of the few, trust me, boo, been there, done that, lived it for too long. It's sucks. It sucked when I was younger checking my account and it's like, you have a dollar 42 and I'm like, Oh, cool. Well, make sure I stop this gas pump at a dollar <laughs> cause you don't want to go over and then, you know, drive under 2000 RPM. So you're not guzzling the gas or whatever else. Right. I think we've all been at some point in our life. Maybe not all of us. Some of y'all are probably way smarter and never had to get to that point because you are smarter than me, not smarter than everybody else, smarter than me. Um, never either, either never had to get to that point because you, you had an easy, I don't want to say easier upbringing cause there's still something in my eye, but you had more money when you were younger. So it wasn't really a thing. And then maybe you had better, um, spending thoughts and habits when you were younger or better saving habits. And, and so some of you might not ever understand what the word broke means or, uh, and yay, you, yay, I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? I would much rather b people be able to say they don't ever have to worry about being broke again or never had to worry about being broke. That's, that's what you want to hear, right? I don't know what's happening over here. I just know that there's mascara floating in my eyeball. I can feel it and it feels like pebbles. That's how I know it's mascara and not an eyelash. Oh, listen, I love you all immensely. I would love to hear if you have, if you guys did anything like that in school, or if you have little side hustles or something that you do, or if you have ideas, maybe if you have ideas, keep it to yourself. If it's like a proprietary kind of thing, like you don't think other people should do it because you want to trademark it or something, don't tell us in the comments, but anybody else drop it in the comments. Let's have a chat. Let's all learn how to do new things to make some money. Um, I will say, don't put anything in there. that's like, Hey, street corner. Hey, only fans. We're not doing that. We're not, no, 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 no. Th those are the no, no's. We're not doing those things. Okay. Other things perfectly fine. Those things. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. That is all. <laughs> I love y'all. Squirrel tribe 2.0. I will see you again. I want to say tomorrow, but I can't promise because I just never know what's going to happen. So I will see you when I see you. Bye guys.